Hi, Bruce Edgerly here. You can call me Edge. And I'm here today with Jim Conway. You can call him Sarge. We're here to talk about group searching. What's group searching? It's basically more than one person searching for one or more victims. And why is it important? Well, it's really important for you to practice searching with the group that you go riding with in the backcountry. Um, the thing about recreational um, groups is that usually in the digital transceiver era, people are pretty good at finding at least one victim. So take advantage of that. Rather than one person doing all the transceiver searching and everybody else following, like you might see in uh, a guiding scenario, for instance, all the people should be searching with their transceivers simultaneously rather than consecutively one victim after the other. So that'll save you time and will simplify the process. Okay, so somebody in your group yells out avalanche. First thing to do is make sure everybody in the group is in a safe spot. When they're in that safe spot, they got eyes on the victim. We're trying to find a last seen point. When the dust settles from the avalanche, it's important to appoint a leader. That leader is going to be critical through the whole rescue process. Leader's next step is going to get somebody calling for help. Next thing leader is going to do is make sure everybody is in search mode. Nothing messes up a search more than a rogue signal during a rescue. Okay, so now your group leader is going to organize your group for the search. What he's going to do is spread everybody out into lanes. The lanes are going to be anywhere from as little as 5 meters all the way up to 40 meters maximum. When we've got everybody spread out, you're just going to start the search. You're going to move down the hill. You're going to try and stay close to each other. This helps the leader see what's going on. You're going to maintain your lane width, and you're going to keep going until you get a signal. We always talk about searching downhill, but that's not always the case. We could be searching uphill, we could be searching sideways. This technique works no matter what direction you're going. The key thing is establishing lanes and sticking to them. Okay, so now as a team member, your leader's got you lined out, you're in your lane, you're working your lane. You're gonna continue down till you get a signal. At this point, you wanna call out to the leader. Hey, signal, 45 meters, okay? That's all he needs to know for now. You're gonna continue down, Give them a reading like about every 10 meters. So 30, 20, 10, okay? That's the kind of information the leader needs, but not too much information. So when we break off our lane discipline is when we get a number that is equal to or less than our lane width. At that point, we use the direction lights on our transceiver to get in close to the victim. Okay, so now I've got the low reading. You're gonna start probing. Yell up to the leader, probing. Let him know what's going on. You get a strike, yell out strike. Give him the depth, 1.5 meters, whatever it is. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to shovel the guy out. Leader's probably gonna reallocate resources to come help you shovel. If not, get started on your own. It's also possible that one person might get a signal and he might want to go straight to probing and shoveling. When he does that, the other team members need to spread out a little further to move down the rest of the search area. Okay, one thing you can do that helps move things along quicker is when you get that low reading with your beacon, take advantage of the advanced capabilities. Look down uh, on the BCA, are you seeing the brackets that indicate another beacon close? Um, you have big picture mode, you know, press that, see if there's another one. Let that group leader know, hey, I've got one close to me here. He can reallocate resources to get another searcher in there that can really shortcut the time of that rescue. So now you or your team have excavated the victim. You've got, maybe you've got a foot, you're digging towards the head. Uh, call out, let the leader know, victim found. Then the next most important thing is Get that guy going, get, get an airway going, assess his basic condition, get that information up to the leader as quickly as you can. Okay, while one of the team members is dealing with what's going on in his lane, the same thing's going on in each lane with the same procedures. Uh, important thing in here is the communication, the proper amount of communication back to the leader. The leader's job is mostly to maintain the integrity of the lanes. It's to look for patterns so we can you know, keep 
people from doing kids soccer on the same the same beacon and finally to allocate resources uh, he can tell if one lane's clear you know you get to the end of your lane yell lane clear let the leader know then he has another resource he can allocate to somebody else who has found a victim <laughs>so if you're searching for just a single victim you want to continue in your lanes until a signal is obtained the leader should then assign one person to continue with the beacon search using the directional capabilities of the transceiver the leader should then instruct the rest of the team to get ready with probes and shovels Due to the increasing traffic these days in the backcountry, it's not a bad idea if you, ha if you have the manpower to clear the path. And by that we mean you search the remaining area of the debris pile to make sure there's not someone else buried in there for maybe another party. Another thing to watch out for is the rogue signal. This is when somebody unintentionally enters the search area in transmit mode. This is gonna ruin the most well-organized search effort. So rule of thumb on that is, is everybody who enters that scene is guilty until proven innocent. It's up to the leader to double check, make sure that guy's either off or in search mode. You may be in a situation where you have more people than you need. We obviously don't wanna to throw too many people out front with beacons if we don't need to. If you have extra bodies, have them ready to go in reserve with shovels and probes that the leader can now designate as people start to get signals. Okay, as, as a team member, think of what's gonna be usable to the leader. If everybody's calling out their numbers every two meters, like 53, 51, 49, 47, and there's four or five people doing it all, all at once, is any leader anywhere gonna be able to process all that information? No. So what really makes this work is an effective leader. A leader leads. A leader does not have his face in his beacon. I don't know anybody in the world who can process what's going on in the beacon and a group of four or five searchers at the same time. So if you're gonna lead, you have to lead. Now that we've talked about group searching, the next step is to go out and practice with the group you ride with in the backcountry. There's really no substitute for stepping up and trying to be the leader. So go out and get that experience. And I think you're gonna find that communication skills when you're group searching are just as important as your transceiver skills. For more education, go to backcountryaccess.com learn.